Now, from KTBS 3 in Shreveport, this is KTBS 3 News at 10. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Sherry Allen. And I'm Charles Hadlock. We begin tonight with the verdict in the deadly drunk driving crash trial. Dennis Crenshaw was found guilty as charged just about 30 minutes ago. It took the jury about two hours to find Crenshaw guilty on two counts of vehicular homicide and one count of vehicular negligent injury. Police say that in March of last year, Crenshaw was driving 80 miles an hour when he hit a car on Marshall Street in downtown Shreveport killing Vicki Williams and her nine-year-old son, Lee Anthony. Crenshaw's blood alcohol level was almost three times the legal limit. Crenshaw faces up to 20 years in prison on each vehicular homicide count. He's been ordered to jail pending sentencing. There was a time when so many more young people wanted to become police officers. Now that dream is fading, and that's leaving departments struggling to find qualified recruits. One of those departments is in Bossier City. KTBS 3's Jim Roberts has details. Joel Fentress spent a year waiting to get into the academy to become a Bossier City police officer. We all want a high caliber uh, officer here on the street backing us up. Like every other officer, Fentress went through a battery of tests, interviews, and checks. Criminal history check, uh, lie detector test, drug screen. I mean, this is just the application right here just to take the civil service test. When they're hired as a police officer, it'll be that thick with information on them. Bossier Police Chief Mike Halfin says out of the 100 people that initially applied in December for the jobs, we might be able to find five to six people to hire. Halfin estimates four out of five recent applicants admit to experimenting with drugs as teens. That doesn't necessarily disqualify a candidate, though. But we're finding more of getting into, well, yes, I did marijuana, I did ecstasy, I did crack, and I haven't, though, in the last couple of years, that's somebody we would not look at. Bossier, like other departments, fights to recruit minorities and women, but battles negative publicity. Everybody wants to be a fireman because they go to help people. When the police show up, they're there to put somebody in jail, usually. It's going to have to be the bad guy. Halfin had hoped to have the new officers on the streets by the middle of 2005. He says it may take longer, but won't lower his department's standards. I'm not going to compromise. If it takes me five years to get these 30, I'm going to continue the same process as I am now. And Officer Fentress is happy with that. So that you feel safe doing your job because uh, you're only as good as the guy behind you backing you up. Jim Roberts, KTBS 3 News. And Bossier City is expected to spend one and a half million dollars to train and equip new officers. Bossier City police say a man gunned down his own brother during a morning argument over money. A helicopter rushed the victim to a hospital while the victim's brother sat handcuffed in a police car. 23-year-old Carmelthius Hill was pronounced dead at LSU Hospital in Shreveport. 21-year-old Lionel Hill is charged with second-degree murder. A neighbor described what happened outside the home at the corner of Bragg and Rebel. I just heard four shots. I had just drove up to my house and I got out my car and came out to the street and I saw the guy, he was laying there. What we had here was two brothers who got into an argument uh, over money, uh, got into an altercation inside the house. That altercation spilled out into uh, the driveway and at that point, sometime, the uh, uh, one brother shot the other brother. Others inside the home called 911 and police talked the gunman into surrendering. Police say the Hills lived at the home with their mother. A drive-by shooting in Shreveport has left one man dead. It happened around 9 o'clock last night in the 3400 block of Palm Road. Police say a man drove by in a white vehicle and started firing. Antonio D. Loveless was hit once in the back. If you have any information that can help police solve this case, call Crime Stoppers at 673-7000. A trial for an East Texas mother accused of stoning her two sons to death has been delayed. Deanna Laney has been in jail since May, uh, since May for the bludgeoning deaths of eight-year-old Joshua and six-year-old Luke Laney. Her toddler son Aaron was found in his crib bleeding from a head wound, but he has survived. A status hearing was held today in Tyler. A court-appointed doctor who will determine Laney's competency is expected to have his report ready in just a few weeks. Two mental health experts hired by prosecutors and two others hired by Laney's attorneys earlier determined she was insane at the time of the murders. 
The trial date is now set for March 29th. The King of Pop appeared in a California courtroom today to enter a plea on charges of child molestation. Michael Jackson made his way to the courtroom surrounded by hundreds of fans. He arrived about 21 minutes late to his arraignment and got a scolding from the judge who told him his tardiness was an insult to the court. Jackson pleaded not guilty today. Another court session is scheduled for February 13th. East Texas Congressman Max Sandlin filed tonight for re-election in House District 1. Sandlin waited until the very last minute to decide which district to run in. He had a choice of either District 4, which now includes Texarkana and parts of the Dallas suburbs, or his current District 1, which now includes Marshall, Longview, Tyler, Nacogdoches, and Lufkin. Sandlin's district was redrawn in a redistricting plan approved by the Texas legislature. Today, the U.S. Supreme Court refused to block the plan. Sandlin said it was a heart-wrenching decision because he is giving up voters in the area around his hometown of Atlanta, but he decided to run in the district that now includes Marshall, where he lives. You know, that congressional redistricting fight did go all the way to the Supreme Court, but today the high court rejected an emergency appeal from Democrats to block the use of redrawn congressional lines. Later this year, justices will announce whether they'll consider an appeal from Democrats and others who claim the redrawn Texas map dilutes minority voting strength. The districts were approved in October by the Texas legislature after months of political fighting. The new map was upheld earlier this month by a three-judge federal panel. East Texas landowners have won a fight for their property. Texas Land Commissioner Jerry Patterson sided with them in a dispute over boundaries. The dispute was outlined in a public hearing in Gilmer last month. It involves over 4,600 acres of land and the minerals on that property. Patterson says the state has no right to the land. Rancher William Dixon claimed that the property in Upshur County was never properly surveyed and should be returned to the state, but the landowners won. However, the decision is expected to be appealed in state district court. Greenwood's town clerk is out of a job. Melody Hasty has been fired amid, amid investigations into the clerk's office. Now, both the Caddo Sheriff's Office and the Legislative Auditor's Office are investigating what could be thousands of dollars in missing cash. Hasty was put on administrative leave last month. This week, following an executive session of the mayor and town council, Hasty was fired. There's no word on when the two investigations will be completed. Meanwhile, some of the town's proceeds have turned up. $30,000 in checks to the city were left in the mailbox of town council member Elise Wissing. There was also a deposit slip for $3,000, but no cash. With much of the eastern U.S. still in a deep freeze, the Consumer Product Safety Commission has issued a warning about the fire hazards posed by space heaters. Since December 1st, at least 49 deaths have resulted from fires caused by the heaters. ABC's Nancy Weiner reports on other problems caused by the intense cold. For Northeasterners, the bitter cold has now seeped into every aspect of daily life from getting to work to heating the house. With power use soaring to record levels, utilities in New England are asking customers to conserve and warning of the possibility of rolling blackouts. The governor of Maine declared a civil emergency, so regulations limiting overtime for fuel oil delivery drivers could be waived. It's so cold that actually I have to wear long underwear inside to keep to feel like I'm comfortable. For many people just trying to do their jobs, the ice has become an enemy. Commuter ferries linking New Jersey and New York can't cross the frozen Hudson River. This house fire in Quincy, Massachusetts went to three alarms because firefighters couldn't find a hydrant that wasn't iced over. The radials, we've been having communication problems out here because the radials get ice cake. The frigid weather system swooping down from the North Pole has now claimed more than a half a dozen lives. Among them, a 37-year-old male hiker who died of hypothermia in New Hampshire's White Mountains, where the temperature with wind chill has hit 100 below. Concerned about children being exposed to such harsh conditions, school officials from New York to Massachusetts told kids to stay home. Fast students don't have sub-zero clothing in their wardrobes. Weather conditions are expected to improve slightly over the weekend, but another Arctic blast is due to hit the Northeast next week. Nancy Weiner, ABC News, New York.
And here in the Arklatex, it's cooled down from earlier in the week, but not nearly as cold as the Northeast. No, all we really have to deal with here is the rain. Mark, how long will that last? Well, it's pretty steady outside right now. We're looking for it to last through about midday tomorrow before a cold front comes in tomorrow night. Look at some rainfall totals so far today, about four-tenths of an inch in southern Shreveport and up around Clarksville. Rainfall totals will continue to mount tonight. More on your forecast coming up, so stay with us. Hello, Architects. Tommy Harvey here at John Harvey Toyota. Folks, it's time to kick off 2004 with Toyota. We've got Camrys, the number one selling car in America, only $15,988. Load it up like you like. Or how about Corolla's 2004 models, folks? A minimum $3,000 discount off MSRP. That's only at Harvey Toyota in Bossier City. Come and see us. At Harvey Toyota, everybody wants one. Just in time. It's the hottest thing out there, and Wrights has it in stock. It's Sony Grand Vega. The all-new, revolutionary LCD projection slimline TV. And Wrights has it in stock. Grand Vega. From 42 to 70 huge inches of the very best digital picture in the world. Wrights has your big screen at your price. Plasma LCD and LCD projection TVs. All priced to sell by game time. The top brands at the best prices ever. Remember, 12 months, same as cash. Reserve your delivery now and see the game the Wrights way. McDonald's. Grab a sausage McMuffin with egg right now for only a dollar. Got it? Get it! McDonald's. The best way to start my day. I'm loving it. Quality engineering and state-of-the-art design never go out of style. That's why at Roundtree Cadillac in Shreveport, we've got a great selection of certified pre-owned Cadillacs. Each certified Cadillac goes through a 100-point quality inspection. You get a six-year, 100,000-mile bumper-to-bumper warranty and 24-hour roadside assistance. Bottom line, you get Cadillac quality at used car prices. We're Roundtree Cadillac in the Auto Mall, and we've got it all. Now, with Mega 3 in your Storm Team forecast, here's meteorologist Mark Rowlett in the Storm Team 3 Weather Lab. Good evening, everyone. Joe Haynes has the night off. It's a rainy night across most of the Arklatex. Keep your umbrella handy. We are looking for a break, though, to come in tomorrow afternoon. Look at our live tower cam 3 network. This is Top Century Tell Arena, and we're looking east into Bossier City. And we've got some light rain over all of Shreveport, Bossier, and pretty much over all the Arklatex. And just plan on that staying with us pretty much all night long tonight. Here is your Skycast forecast tomorrow morning at 7 o'clock. We are looking at, yes, still some rainy skies around our temperature around 55. The good news is temperatures don't plummet overnight. In fact, they kind of stay steady for the remainder of the night. Noontime, still a chance of some light showers, especially eastern parts of the area, 63. I think we'll see some peaks of sunshine and 70 over most of the central and western parts of the area at 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. Then a cold front comes in tomorrow night to bring us more changes for Sunday. Live Mega 3, you've got a big area of rain. Don't rule out hearing a little clap of thunder overnight. We've seen a few little cloud to ground lightning strokes in this area of rain, but nothing stormy, nothing severe, just a steady rain coming up from the south. So we're planning on kind of a little soaker for tonight. That's good for trying to crack into that deficit, but uh, if you've got some plans overnight, just be careful driving around. More heavier showers down to our southwest and west of us, and all this is expected to move across the Arklatex overnight. So we are expecting even some heavier rainfall to move through before noontime tomorrow. Then that pause in our forecast for tomorrow afternoon. Look at our satellite radar in motion. Big upper level low coming across northern Mexico, and that's what's really helping to drive all this rain up into our area. We expect this feature to move through and give us that pause in the rain for tomorrow afternoon into tomorrow evening. Then a cold front gets into the mix to bring showers back for Sunday. So that's kind of our nutshell of the weekend forecast. Looking at our current weather map, a warm front's working its way through. That's why temperatures are going to stay fairly steady around here overnight. So that's a good thing. Mild temperatures. Don't have to worry about any freezing rain or anything like that like they do up north. And we are looking at current temperatures. It's 56 in Shreveport and Bossier, 54 in Texarkana. And look for 
temperatures will stay pretty much steady for the remainder of the night. Precision cast forecast a big area of rain right over us at 7 o'clock in the morning, but by 5 o'clock tomorrow afternoon, it should be east of us and we'll see some breaks in the clouds. Here comes that cold front tomorrow night around midnight, 7 o'clock Sunday morning. Cloudy and cooler with some light sprinkles up around Texarkana, northern parts of the area. And then by 5 o'clock Sunday afternoon, still cloudy and cool with some light rain showers. Just about any part of the Arklatex for your Sunday afternoon. Should clear out Sunday night. Looking at high temperatures tomorrow, it's going to be mild. If we get that little break in the rain like we expect tomorrow afternoon, we'll get up to near 70 in Shreveport and Bossier, about 65 in El Dorado, and 66 for your high tomorrow in Texarkana. Those are about 10 degrees above normal for this time of the year. 24-hour forecast, a rainy start to your Saturday morning, about 55 degrees. Noontime, 63 by 5 o'clock, 70 mild degrees, only a slight chance of a shower. 10 o'clock tomorrow night, light rain showers start moving back into northern parts of the area. Still mild, though, about 58 degrees. Colder temperatures come in for early Sunday, and our seven-day forecast will show you kind of a cool, showery day for Sunday. Light rain for Sunday, but a pretty good chance of that. Clear and kind of chilly for Monday and Tuesday. Then our old friends, the clouds, come back in Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. A slight chance of showers in there on Wednesday. So morning rain, but I think we'll see a break tomorrow afternoon and then cooler for Sunday. They're All not right. really our friends. They're just acquaintances. <laughs> well, well, they're they come and friends. Go. They right. just kind of crash the party, don't they? Yeah, That's they do. right. Thanks, Thanks Mark. Valentine, Valentine's candy has already hit the store shelves, but some of it will never make it there. It hit the pavement instead. Details on an accident that shut down part of a local interstate are coming up next. Plus, deputies stopped dozens of cars in Caddo Parish this afternoon. Find out what they were looking for when KTBS 3 News at 10 continues. Hamilton here at Roundtree Hyundai where we're getting ready for our big sale tomorrow, Saturday. Well-equipped Hyundai Sonatas with all this and a 10-year warranty, just $12,988. And that's just one example. Remember, tomorrow you win at Roundtree Hyundai on Mansfield Road. One candidate for state senate knows improving public schools means replacing the current school finance system. Kevin Eltife believes to improve public education, we must reduce property taxes and maintain current levels of classroom funding. Kevin Eltife, appointed by Governor George W. Bush to the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board. As your next state senator, I will continue to work with parents and teachers to improve public schools for all of Northeast Texas. Kevin Eltife for state senator, a new leader for Northeast Texas. Hi folks, hope you have a great night. Dan Walters here, champion Ford in Shreveport. When it comes to used cars and trucks now, we believe in the two Bs. Bigger selection, better prices. Yeah, we got lots of pre-owned Fords. We have a lot of cars and trucks you might not expect to find in a Ford dealership, like Chevy Suburban and Chevy Trailblazers, Honda Accord, Chevy Z28. And the great news, every single one marked for immediate sale. We're the used car champion. A champion Ford, Bird Coons in the Auto Mall. You come and see us. Everyone knows high property taxes hurt our economy and make home ownership tougher for working families. Everyone except Paul Sadler. He voted against limiting property tax hikes. Sadler voted to deny us the right to vote on big property tax increases. Paul Sadler even tried to pass a new state income tax on working families. Paul Sadler, higher property taxes, a new state income tax. We can't afford Paul Sadler. Dana Hamilton here at Roundtree Hyundai with a reminder that tomorrow, Saturday, every new Hyundai will be marked down for immediate clearance. Like 2004 Accents with all this, just $79.88. And that includes a 10-year warranty. Remember, tomorrow you win at Roundtree Hyundai on Mansfield Road. Now, KTBS 3 News continues. Buckle up. It's the law. Caddo Sheriff's deputies were driving that point home this afternoon. They conducted a seatbelt checkpoint this afternoon for two hours. Deputies stopped vehicles at Highway 538 and Highway 77 to check for seatbelt violators. More than 100 cars were stopped during the checkpoint. Deputies wrote citations for eight adult seatbelt violators and one for a child who wasn't properly restrained. I-49 is smelling pretty sweet tonight. Earlier today, Valentine's candy was covering part of it, closing one of the lanes. An 18-wheeler carrying the candy overturned on the interstate in DeSoto Parish around 4 o'clock this morning. The driver says he was trying to avoid a deer. Fortunately, no one was hurt. 
The end is in sight for traffic woes in Natchitoches, Louisiana. Repairs began today on the 70-year-old Church Street Bridge. The city's main bridge over Cane River Lake was closed on Friday for routine inspection. That was a week ago today, but that inspection revealed a problem, a girder failure that caused the two-lane span to sink more than an inch. Crews started driving pilings this afternoon and will soon turn attention to jacking up the sinking end of the bridge. State Highway Engineer Rhett DeSalle is in charge of the repairs and he says he expects all the work on the bridge to take about 10 days, but that's barring weather delays or other uncertainties. They serve their country, now they're getting a place to stay. Details on a new veteran's home are coming up next. And this woman rang in the new year as a multi-millionaire, but no one knew it until today. The story in two minutes. Camry, the number one selling car in America, six years. In North Louisiana, Toyota cars outsell Ford, Chevy, and Dodge. 2004 Camry, Corolla, Matrix, Avalon, all Consumer Digest Best Buy for 2004. Hurry in today. Every Toyota is on sale now. It all ends February 2nd. Hurry to your Toyota Power Team dealers today. As a mother and an educator, I'm voting for Tommy Merritt because I know firsthand what he has done to provide additional funding and resources for teachers use in the classroom. As a law enforcement officer, I'm voting for Tommy Merritt because he supports our fight to get criminals off our streets. As a past NRA chairman, I'm voting for Tommy Merritt. He has a record of defending our Second Amendment rights. On January 20th, vote Tommy Merritt for Texas Senate. Hats off to mom. She knew how to start your day off right. No toasty flakes for you. What you need is the kind of hot, hearty breakfast that would earn mom's stamp of approval. So right now at Whataburger, we're serving taquitos for under a buck. How about that, mom? What a burger. Just like you like it. Ladies and gentlemen, you asked for it. Ivan Smith Furniture is repeating our famous half-price cash sale this Saturday. Count your pennies, check your savings account, bring your checkbook, Visa, Discover, or MasterCard to your local Ivan Smith Furniture and Appliance Center this Saturday from 10 a.m. until 4 p.m. Not all furniture's half-hour sale deck price, but if you miss this savings event, you will pay too much. All Broy Hill, Lane, Sealy, Allen, White, Mayo, Ashley, and others are at our lowest prices. Yes, we are repeating our famous cash sale this Saturday at your local Ivan Smith Furniture and Appliance Centers. Now, KTBS 3 News continues. Shreveport now has another place for homeless veterans to call home. Woody's Home for Veterans on Jordan Street was officially opened this afternoon. The home is named after Woody Key, a World War II medic and the father of one of the home's founders, Ronald Key. The facility provides a safe, home-like environment for veterans who need psychiatric attention. Right now, the facility can house up to 12 residents but its founder says it's just the beginning. And our plans are, when we get to 80% is to keep expanding and as long as there's need for homes for veterans who have psychiatric disorders, we'll be here. Woody's home got its first resident last August. Four people are vying to be the next head of Grambling State University. The candidates for president are Gene Garriking, a consultant from Plano, Texas, Jerome Green, Jr., Associate Vice President for Academic Affairs at Mississippi Valley State University, Martin Shapiro, Professor of Marketing at Manhattanville College in Purchase, New York, and Wayne Wormley, a consultant in Philadelphia. Acting President Neri Warner says she will not be a contender for the post. Wednesday, the school will hold one of two public forums to get input about the candidates. She kept it hidden for more than two weeks, but a Pennsylvania woman has now come clean. 42-year-old Lisa Ensor came forward as the second of two winners in the $221 million New, York e New Year's Eve Powerball jackpot. The 42-year-old was spending the past few weeks getting legal and financial advice. Ensor hasn't decided how she will spend her $60 million lump sum payout, but she's now planning a larger wedding reception. <laughs> the Mudbugs try to keep a good thing going. Coming up next, we'll show you what happened during tonight's game. Plus, the latest high school hoops action. Tim Fletcher has the latest in the world of sports coming up next. 
Hi, car truck buyers. Hope you're having a great night. Dan Walters here at Champion Ford in Shreveport, where it's always our goal to sell every new Ford in our giant inventory for $1,000 less than anybody else in this part of the country. That's how we got to be number one. Hey, now's a great time to buy during our January price freeze. Coming right now, folks, we're selling brand new 2004 Ford F 150s for just $13,990. 2004 F 150s, $13,990. And that's just one example, one place. Champion Ford, Bird Coons, and the Auto Mall. You come and see us. The Hyundai Sonata makes more sense than ever. Once again, ranked most appealing entry midsize car by JD Power and Associates. It's $3,700 less than a Toyota Camry LE when comparably equipped. And only Hyundai has America's best warranty, 10 years, 100,000 miles. Test drive the 2004 Hyundai Sonata starting at just $15,339. When your car makes this much sense, you win. See Roundtree Hyundai on Mansfield Road today for great deals on 2004 Hyundais. If you're looking for a true luxury automobile, you've got several choices, but only one is an American classic. Cadillac. Breakthrough at Roundtree Cadillac in Shreveport with the sporty new Cadillac CTS, the versatile and all-new Cadillac SRX, or the elegant and stylish Cadillac Escalade. We've got the hottest lines of cars and trucks on the market, and we're just getting started. Roundtree Cadillac, we've got it all. Thanks, Arklatex, for making Jeopardy number one. Next Inside Edition, Inside the Caravan at the Michael Jackson Arraignment. It's a Jackson invasion. Inside Edition has exclusive access to the convoy. Watch the next Inside Edition. Following Nightline on KTBS 3. This edition of KTBS 3 Sports is brought to you by the Bone and Joint Clinic of Shreveport. Now, KTBS 3 Sports. I'm not sure about the scope of the Lubbock Cotton Kings empire, but here's hoping their fiefdom is never attacked because the worst team in the Central Hockey League is absolutely horrible defensively. Not only do the CKs give up more goals than anyone in the CHL, they are next to last in scoring as well, which should bode well for the local Canadians. The Mudbugs skated into tonight's game with wins in eight of their last nine games. Has anyone ever seen Century Tail Center? There it is. That's like a brochure for these people. They owe us money now. Chad Spur fires it in. Forbes McPherson picks up the trash with a shorthand goal. One zip in the first. Midway through the second, Chris Broussard does it all by his lonesome two zip bugs taking charge. Not too much later in the period, Craig Soakey is going to wake up the wattage. It's three nothing bugs. They are absolutely pulling away at this point. So they win the game. How about a fight? All right. Jim Sprott is going to beat Jerry Hickey. He's got more than a hickey on his throat and his face after Sprotter gets through with him. Keep an eye on Sprott's right hand about right here. He tickles him. No, he doesn't tickle him unless you count the old uppercut to the jaw. Right about there. There's the blood that you want to see. Urgh. Now, I'm showing Charles how this happens. Charles, here, here, uh, uh, let go. Mudbug's going to win 5-1. Ken Carroll stops 26 of 27 shots. The local Canadians don't get a lot of rest, though. They're back at it in Bossier tomorrow night against Memphis. And then it's Oklahoma City in town on Sunday. Wow. Oh. Southwind and Bird. Hallock packs a punch. Yeah. Are the two most tradition-rich schools in town when it comes to high school hoops? Always interesting when the two tangle. Bird hanging on to a one-point lead with two seconds to play in the first quarter. Check this out. Michael Cade from just beyond half court nails it. Heaves it heavenward and is rewarded. Holy smokes, let's check it out again in slow motion. I'm slowing it down here at the desk. Oh, amazing. If that had been the MTV Rock and Jock game, that's 10 points. Southwood's Gabe Hall is one of those kids in the hall that's driving angry. Slowly but surely, gravity works for him. It falls Southwood within one. Not every shot that Bird made tonight came from behind the arc. The highlights just kind of make it look that way. Josh Jefferson. He's moving on up. Cans the ham. 27-17. Bird in front. Southwood hanging in there. The fastest teenager in town. Frankie Gaston gets the steal right here. And there goes Frankie. Frankie goes to Hollywood. Frankie goes to the hoop. F-G-T-H. You know, Frankie can also park it in a tight space and pay the meter from outside. Nice job, Gatson. You know what? Southwood trailed this game by five at the break. They come back to win tonight. 54 53, nice job by Southwood. In a district game on the north side of town, Northwood 
hosting Menden. The Tide led by 16 in the second quarter, but here comes the Falcons. If you have a headband on, you ought to be able to shoot from outside. That should be a state rule. He knocks it down. I want to start wearing headbands on the set. Menden would put up... Thank you. Menden would put up quite a bit of an effort tonight, though they absolutely paced Northwood, despite our highlights showing Northwood scoring every time they have the ball, 77-62. KTBS 3 sports star Elena Beard and the top-ranked Duke Blue Devils hit the highway this weekend. They're seeking their 48th consecutive ACC win, and speaking of streaks, Elena has started 116 straight games. That's tops in the land. Cliff, one of the highlights Sunday night at 10. Michelle Wee wasn't trying to make the cut at a high school district golf tourney. She's not making noise in the Honolulu City Amateur. It's the 14-year-old girl taking on the big course with the big boys. Second round of the Sony Open in Hawaii. We trying to do something that Annika Sorenstam and Susie Whaley didn't, and that's make the cut. The long birdie putt on the seventh hole gets we like it. It's we mendus. We tacular. Back to even for the day, two over for the tournament. She would need to get to one under par, though, for the tournament to make the cut. Her shot at surviving for the weekend looked more promising four holes later. Putting from Maui on 11. Oh, we love it. That's another bird. A bogey on 13. Put the pressure on here on 16. No, we know she needs three birdies over her last three holes to play the weekend. Well, we know that. She knows that. She's we. We are he and her and him. We got it. It's a birdie on 16, but she would par 17. And then that would leave her needing an eagle on 18. She would get the birdie there. So we, we, we. Even par for the day, shooting a nice 70. I mean, a 68, even for the tournament. Misses the cut by one. Steve Allen, who's he, is your leader. The big story, though, I'm getting choked up. I can tell. <laughs> I think it's because Hadlock was actually had his hands on my throat. You know, I, that, that almost broke my hand I again. I can see you got a hard tough. head. I do have a hard head. We already knew that. Exactly. It's like when the guy was cutting my hair, he, had, he broke three pairs of scissors. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> nice job by I Michelle. I believe Wee. that. Pretty impressive. Yeah. Thanks, Tim. Sure. One more check of your forecast is coming up next. Find out what holds for the weekend coming up next. This salute is to everyone who strives for athletic excellence, from the people who have set the standard for excellence in sports medicine in the Arklatex, the Bone and Joint Clinic of Shreveport, as dedicated to being the best as you are. I'm sorry, how can I help you? How far to Miami? Trent? Love is like candy. I on love off-roading. Me too. You want to taste and help yourself. The sweetest things are there for you. Help yourself. Take a few. That's what I want you to do. One candidate for State Senate knows improving public schools means replacing the current school finance system. Kevin Eltife believes to improve public education, we must reduce property taxes and maintain current levels of classroom funding. Kevin Eltife, appointed by Governor George W. Bush to the Texas Higher Education Coordinating Board. As your next state senator, I will continue to work with parents and teachers to improve public schools for all of Northeast Texas. Kevin Eltife for State Senator, a new leader for Northeast Texas. Last year, more than 30,000 people attended. This year, don't miss your opportunity to be a part of the biggest boat and sports show in the Arklatex. Space is going fast, so make sure to reserve yours now. Thousands of browsing customers, acres of free parking, thousands of square feet of space, all under roof. And it's all waiting for you at the KTBS 3 Boat and Sports Show, February 5th through the 8th at the Event Center in South Park Mall. Now, KTBS 3 News continues. We're going to need to bring out the hip boots. we got a lot of water coming down. Quite a bit this weekend. Well, we're below normal rainfall, so probably not any flash flooding, but yeah, it's going to be a wet night across the area. And looking at Live Mega 3, you see a big area of rain that's all marching steadily on to the north, so just plan on steady rain overnight. Even heavier showers and thunder showers are over there in central Texas, southeast Texas, 
That will come over around sunrise in the morning. So maybe hear some thunder and see a little bit of lightning to start your day, but then clearing in the afternoon. Rest of your weekend forecast, morning rain, and I think we'll see some breaks in the clouds in the afternoon with a high of warm 70. Cold front comes in Saturday night to bring us cooler temperatures, but also some light showers for Sunday. All right. right. Thanks. Have a good weekend. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. And thanks for joining us for KTBS 3 News at 10. I'm Charles Hadlock. And I'm Cherry Allen. Nightline's next. Have a great weekend. Good night. Very heavy bombing the last two days. Somehow.